My coverage of CES 2018 from Las Vegas, Nevada is brought to you by Cooler Master, Enermax, OCZ Toshiba, and Deepcool. So guys, I was actually invited to Las Vegas a little bit early by AMD, and they held a tech day on January 6, 2018, where they shared some excellent and exciting news about their upcoming products for 2018. So that's what this video is going to be all about. I'm going to be just doing a talking heads uh, thing and sharing some slides with you and that kind of thing. Bear in mind that anything I'm showing you guys as far as performance numbers was all provided directly by AMD, so take it with a grain of salt, of course, and we will be, of course, testing these products once they become available. But we have announced and confirmation of Ryzen 2 coming very soon in April. And we also have a bunch of new products because they laid out their roadmaps for CPU and GPU going all the way through 2020, although they are slightly vague. But let's start there, roadmaps. So let's start off with the CPU roadmap. And of course, in 2017, AMD launched Ryzen, their first Zen-based product. It had a 52% instructions per clock improvement versus their old excavator architecture. It was very well received, and uh, that's all new old news now, though. Of course, that was 2017. We're in 2018 now. So Zen Plus is the refinement of the Zen microarchitecture, and they're actually moving it from 14 nanometer down to 12 nanometer. So a slight reduction in the process size, which should hopefully potentially lead to some efficiency enhancements and maybe even some higher overclocking performance. Zen Plus is what the Ryzen 2 family of CPUs for desktop will be based on, so keep an eye out for those in April 2018. And then looking beyond that, in 2019, presumably just based on how they laid these out, they started at 2017 and they ended at 2020, so I'm assuming the, the ones in between line up with the different uh, years that should correspond. So in 2019, we should get Zen 2, the actual new microarchitecture, not just a refinement of the original Zen microarchitecture. Uh, that's also going to be moving to the 7 nanometer manufacturing process, so shrinking it down even smaller. They say the design is complete for Zen 2 as far as the microarchitecture goes, and uh, also apparently suck it Intel and your crappy 10 nanometer process. They're moving to 7, which is pretty small. Incredibly small, actually. Looking even further than that, though, in 2020, we have Zen 3, the third version of this microarchitecture, and that's going to be on a refinement of the 7 nanometer process, and according to AMD, they're on track. So in 2020, Zen 3. Looking forward to that, too. Let's move over to the GPU roadmap, though. This one is not quite as rich when it comes to details, but of course, in 2017, AMD launched Vega, uh, at least the Radeon Technologies Group, uh, and in 2018, they're planning on moving uh, the Vega GPU architecture down again to that 7 nanometer process. I believe they're using Global Foundries for that, uh, and apparently, from everything they're telling us, uh, yields must be somewhat decent so far, or if they're not, they're, they're just not sharing that information yet. But they seem very optimistic about that process. And then moving beyond that in 2019, again, presumably based on just how they laid everything out here, we'll have Navi. And Navi's the actual successor GPU architecture to Vega, and uh, we'll have to see how that actually plays out. It's still just sort of a word that's out there in the ether right now, but um, you guys can already start saying, I'm going to wait for Navi. That's probably what most people will say. Uh, and then again, looking even beyond that, all the way out to 2020, we have what is only being called next gen 7 nanometer plus uh, GPU microarchitecture. So they're not even sharing the code name with it yet. So we can't even say, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to wait for Navi. I'm going to wait for that next gen thing. Uh, hopefully they'll have some new exciting name for us soon there, but look forward for that in 2020 on the 7 nanometer plus process. Now, to get a little bit more specific for 2018, they gave us a, a little bit more of a refined roadmap. So in Q1, we've got the Ryzen desktop APU. That's actually coming February 12th. Uh, we also have a mobile APU. So we're finally seeing Ryzen plus Vega in APUs come out for both the desktop and the mobile side. That's really exciting, when it, whether you're going to build a entry-level desktop or whether you're looking for a nice thin and light laptop. Uh, in Q2, we should have Ryzen 2. Again, that's coming in April for the desktop. And we're also going to have Ryzen Pro Mobile. And of course, the Pro just means it's more tailored for an enterprise environment. Finally, in the second half of this year, one of the most exciting things I think that was announced is second gen Threadripper. So they are working on that. Very sparse on the details, but just says second half, which could be as early as June or as late as December. So they're still leaving it wide open for that. Also in the second half, we're expecting second gen Ryzen Pro. So let's talk some more details about Ryzen 2, and then we also have some Ryzen 1 price drops that are happening right now, uh, but more of those in just a sec. Ryzen 2 is announced. Ryzen 2 is launching in April 2018. They're already sampling Ryzen 2 CPUs to hardware partners uh, for some motherboard manufacturers, for example, so they can get their motherboards all set up. 
It's going to have higher clock speeds. It's also going to feature Precision Boost 2.0, and Precision Boost is extremely popular with the original Ryzen. It's got a new opportunistic algorithm that, that it uses to uh, overclock your processor automatically, and the new process technology that they're using, since they've shrunk it down a little bit, allows Ryzen 2 to run at the same frequency while using the same voltage, or at a higher frequency with less voltage, basically less voltage, less heat, which typically means that you can run at a higher sustained uh, clock speed. Also, they have per core boost now. So rather than boosting two cores or all cores at the same time, you can actually do them all individually, uh, which is very helpful for specific applications that might only use a single CPU thread, for example. Now, AMD already promised that AM4, their actual socket for the CPUs, was going to be viable up through 2020, and they have confirmed that here. Ryzen 2 CPUs will be able to drop into existing AM4-based motherboards with 300 series chipset sets such as B350 and X370. However, there will also be a new set of motherboards with 400 series chipsets. So there's going to be an X470. Uh, that's what they've confirmed with us so far. And I would imagine there's also going to be some B450 type variants of that as well, since that was insanely popular for budget builds. The actual difference between going with, say, a, a 300 series motherboard with a Ryzen 2 processor and a 400 series motherboard with a Ryzen 2 processor is not yet fully known. They did seem to indicate that there might be some improvement that you get by going with the newer motherboard. Uh, it's optimized for second gen Ryzen, so you might have what they say more performance and lower power, but it's not really clear what exactly they mean by that, whether they're going to give you access to additional features or whether you're actually going to get a little bit more performance out of a Ryzen 2 CPU. So I'm hoping they can balance that in a way that people who are using older motherboards will still feel like they're viable, but people who get the new motherboards will get something for you know, being on the bleeding edge of technology, I suppose. Now, in case you're wondering, there's forward and backwards compatibility as well. So a Ryzen 1 uh, CPU from last year will work in these new X470 motherboards as well. Um, so, you know, you can, you can swap those out if you want to, I suppose. But nice to have uh, broad compatibility across that. Also, as mentioned, Ryzen first-gen CPU price drops, which should be in effect right now if you go over to, hopefully I'll put some links in the description, but if you go over to Newegg or Amazon, you should be able to find some crazy good deals, very similar to what we saw actually for the Black Friday pricing uh, this year, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the 1900X, for example, on the high-end uh, Threadripper platform is $450 now, down from $550. 1800X is $350, down from the original MSRP of $500. Uh, and like the R5 1600, the really, really popular six core CPU is now $190 down from 220. So for anyone who's looking to invest now, if you need a, a new desktop now and you can't wait till April when Ryzen 2 launches, you can get some good deals on the existing Zen based processors. Next announcement from AMD is Radeon Vega Mobile. Uh, they also announced Radeon Vega on seven nanometer, uh, but that's a very specific product. More on that in a sec. Uh, this is going to be for laptops, of course. So you have Radeon Vega. It's been out for a little while. We've mainly seen it in large, discrete uh, products, but they've shrunk it way down. They're using the same Vega core uh, that they're using, for example, for the Vega 56 or Vega 64. They've gone from one HBM2 stack down to, uh, from two down to one, and that shrinks down the size of the actual package significantly. It also only has a 1.7 millimeter Z height or top to bottom, which means for thin and light laptops and notebooks or all-in-ones, uh, you save on vertical space. Also allows uh, better uh, cooling solutions, for example, when you can actually get your chip down that small. So that's really cool. Uh, Going to be suitable for ultra-thin laptops. Does still have HBM2 memory is VR capable, according to AMD. Um, and then they also announced that seven nanometer Vega product. It's gonna be a Radeon Instinct machine learning product, which was some of the products they announced really early with Vega, that they actually launched really early with Vega. So probably not gonna be as applicable to you guys out there since I don't know how many of you dabble in machine learning, but it does show that they've managed to take their Vega architecture and shrink it down and get it working on seven nanometers. So that's pretty exciting as well. The theme that they kept going with was Vega everywhere. They want Vega GPU architecture to be in as many different places as possible. So whether you're talking about stuff like next gen consoles or whether you're talking about desktop graphics cards, laptop graphics cards, or even integration with their partners. They announced late last year an Intel and Radeon sort of semi-custom chip design with a mobile Intel CPU and a mobile Radeon Vega GPU. So uh, you're going to see Vega in a lot of different places, um, which is cool because it does have extremely good efficiency if you're running it at the right frequency. 
Um, so it's, ex it's exciting to see what type of products are going to come out with Radeon Vega Mobile. And finally, at long last, we have APUs. Yes, we were expecting them long ago last year because a lot of the original AM4 motherboards had video outs on them, and you can't really use a video out on a motherboard unless you have an integrated GPU as part of your CPU. But they really only launched a couple APUs at the very end of last year. Um, they were well received, but uh, I, I feel like I didn't hear about them too much. They're expanding that lineup though this year, and they're also moving it not just from uh, APUs they're gonna be using laptops, but also socketed uh, desktop APUs. And that's what desktop users who are looking for uh, an entry level build or, or something that's uh, just to get off the ground that can do some light gaming, but also is a very functional uh, computer. Uh, it's a very good application for these APUs. So uh, we have an R5 2400G, that's a four core, eight thread APU, uh, has a 3.6 gigahertz base and a 3.9 gigahertz boost, 11 compute units, 65 watt TDP, uh, and it does include Vega graphics that are running at 1,250 megahertz. It's gonna cost $169, which is actually five bucks less than the, than the non-APU uh, four core, eight thread, Ryzen, original Ryzen part, but we'll, we'll see if there's a difference in clock speed or something like that when it comes down to it. But overclockable graphics, AMD did have a brief uh, overclocking demo that they showed us where they uh, clocked the GPU up to about 1550 megahertz and then all the way up to 1675. Got some nice performance boost from that. And they were comparing it to an Intel uh, solution, the i5-8400, which costs about $200. And of course, the integrated graphics from AMD tend to kick the crap out of Intel's integrated graphics. So it definitely shows you the value of something like an APU, uh, when for $170 you can get the roughly equivalent performance of what with the Intel side you'd have to go for about a $200 processor plus probably adding a discrete GPU on top of it as well. There's also a more budget option, an R3 model, the 2200G, it's a four core, four thread processor, 3.5 gigahertz base, 3.7 gigahertz boost, eight compute units, also with Vega graphics, and that's gonna be sub $100. I believe $99 is the price for that one. Uh, and they did have a couple cool product demos that showed us, for example, a very small mini PC with a mini ITX motherboard with the APU in there. Uh, and thanks to the low TDP or lowish TDP of 65 watts, they're able to power it with an external brick. Um, so some pretty cool implementations I think we're going to see uh, with these APUs once they start to get out on the market more. And of course, them being socketable means that uh, you're going to have a much better time integrating it in the desktop build of your choice because you can go full size or mini ITX or anything in between, which I guess is micro ITX. Anyway, uh, they also have mobile APUs, of course, a couple more that they've announced in Q1 uh, 2018 to go along with the couple that they announced at the end of 2017. R3 2300U is a four core, four thread part with six compute units, and the 2200U is a two core, four thread part with three compute units. These should be very affordable, uh, at least when it comes to bomb costs. These are mobile APUs again, so they're gonna be integrated by uh, laptop manufacturers. The products that they'll be integrated into include two-in-ones, ultra-thins, and even gaming laptops, and they did show a demo running Wolfenstein 2 on the R3 2300U part. They were playing at 1080p, uh, it only has a 15 watt power draw, which is awesome for a laptop, especially with an integrated uh, APU. And it wasn't like the most amazing gameplay you've ever seen, but it was definitely playable. Um, and given that it's only drawing 15 watts, that's insanely good. They also announced mobile XFR, extended frequency range. So if you're using one of these APUs and you have a laptop with better cooling that's built into it, or even if you get something like an add-on, like maybe a laptop stand with fans or something like that, if you can keep the CPU cooler, it's going to uh, uh, kick in that XFR and give you a little bit higher frequency uh, to trade off with the lower temperature. The last part of this was the announcement of Ryzen Pro Mobile, and this is again just a pro version of uh, these APUs uh, with added features for security, manageability, and longevity, uh, which is important, of course, for enterprise customers who want to make sure that they're getting the most bang for their buck and make sure that their products are supported for a really long time. I see these Ryzen APUs as potentially a really nice entry-level variable refresh rate gaming solutions. I feel like these desktop APUs, you can plop in without having to fork over the cash for a discrete graphics card, pair it with a budget uh, FreeSync or FreeSync 2 monitor. Hopefully we'll see more FreeSync 2 monitors coming out this year. And uh, I think that would be a great solution because the lower 
frame rates that you might get with something like an APU would be greatly helped by a variable refresh rate monitor. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for my first video of CES 2018. And uh, you know, speaking of those new AM4 motherboards, I have a feeling that there's gonna be a few of those on display this week. So definitely stay tuned. I have tons more videos planned. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out if you did enjoy it. And of course, one final thank you to my sponsors for this event, Deep Cool, Cooler Master, Enermax, and OCZ Toshiba. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.